The AVA Media Game Broadcaster HD is a PTIE card which is installed into your computer. On the back it has both VGA and HDMI inputs for recording up to 1080p Full HD at 60 frames per second. To record content you need to install the card into your computer, install the included AVA Media Media Center 3D software or other, other third party alternatives and plug in your HDMI or VGA device. Inside the box there is the actual card, an installation CD, however I recommend downloading the latest software and drivers from the Ava Media website, a quick install guide, a component to VGA adapter, a dual RCA to 3.5mm adapter, a 3.5mm to 3.5mm audio cable, and a low profile bracket. The Game Broadcaster HD is not a large expansion card, like for example a graphics card. It measures 160mm in length, 69mm in width, and a very thin 1.5mm in height. It comes default with a standard profile bracket, however it can be used with the included low profile bracket. This card runs via PCIe X1, which will work with any X4, X8, or X16 slots. It is an all black PCB, which unlike my blue gigabyte graphics card, looks appropriate in any computer case. The visible part of the Game Broadcaster HD has a HDMI and VGA input. These can be used for recording either option individually. You can't record from both at once, nor can you use one as an output. This means you have to view it live via the software and results in a slight lag depending on your processor and memory, although I hardly noticed it and games are still fully playable. Finally, there is no audio input, a VGA, so you must use the 3.5mm to 3.5mm cable which is included and the line-in jack. The Game Broadcaster HD will not bypass any HDCP, meaning it will not record PlayStation 3 via HDMI, nor iPad, despite the claims on the Ava Media website, unless using VGA. Included on the disc and available for download on the Ava Media website are the drivers and two pieces of software, Ava Media Media Center 3D and Ava Quick. Ava Quick, from what I can gather, appears to be an interface between a hardware remote and the Media Center software. The Media Center 3D application is where you go to record anything. The Media Center 3D software can also work with any TV tuners you have to watch live TV and view previous recordings, regardless of whether you own a TV tuner or not. The software is also clearly intended to be a Windows Media Center alternative with screens for music and pictures too. The strangest thing is, to record something, you need to go into the TV screen. This software also replaces the default Windows interface, which is also something that I don't like. The Media Center 3D software is very bloated and it is unnecessary having all the media options when all I and 99% of Game Broadcaster HD owners want to do is record gameplay. I feel another lightweight professional looking software could be included to replace the Media Center 3D software which just allows for recording and configuring of settings. The Media Center 3D software just adds confusion and requires extra processing power and therefore I recommend using a third party alternative. There are various options for configuring your recording. These include changing your input source from HDMI to VGA, changing the audio input source and configuring what file type to record to. The latter two are found under settings, TV, configure HD input source. Yes, it took me a while to figure that out. As you'll see on screen, the recording quality using MPEG-2 is nearly perfect reproduction, although I doubt YouTube compression does it justice. It is very smooth and can record up to 60 frames per second at 1920 by 1080 For each second it records via AVI, which is uncompressed, it takes 125 megabytes, which is huge. Using MPEG-2 in Full HD at 30 frames per second, which is what is currently on screen, it records at around 3.6 megabytes per second, which is around 3.3 gigabytes after 15 minutes. One thing I have noticed is sometimes the contrast slash brightness of a VGA record needs to be slightly adjusted in your video editing program of choice to make it easier to read black on white. Game Broadcaster HD retails for $180 AUD at the time this video was made, which makes it one of the most inexpensive options to get started with Full HD recording or streaming. The installation of the card is easy and will not look out of place in any gaming rig. The software does the job, however it is very bloated and a large percentage of the features will never need to be used by anyone who purchases this card. The recording quality is superb and in a capture card, that is the most important part. Taking these points into account, I can safely recommend the Game Broadcast HD to anyone who wishes to record or stream HDMI or VGA.